Good morning, Connections. Um, it's good to be with you again this uh, this beautiful morning, and uh, just want to welcome you all. Uh, it's good to to gather again. It's good to worship. Um, I'm uh, delighted with uh, being activated, uh, being encouraged to to participate. Uh, the one thing I miss the most about our gatherings is uh, just the incredible sense of the presence of God when we do this collectively, when we do this as a community, when we do it as a gathering. And so uh, I'm looking forward to those times when uh, um, just even last week as, as Yaku was playing, um, man, I realized how much I miss our musicians and um, just them ushering us, uh, leading us into the presence of God, just allowing the, the spirit to move. And, and uh, for me, just the, the experience, the sense, that uh, God is with us. Um, th that is something that I uh, I look forward to every single Sunday, and um, uh, I've really missed that. I realise that, and so uh, um, I, I'm I'm yeah I'm hungry for it. I I, I want more of, of just being able to worship with you, alongside you, um, to uh, to songs that are uh, that delight. Um, our Father and delight Jesus and, and just bring um, um, just a wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit. So uh, uh, this morning, I, I, I just trust that you are engaging. I'm trusting that you are, are present and that uh, God is ministering and speaking to you. And then we have also the privilege of being able to um, look at the, the Word of God and it, um, you know meditate on the Word of God and, and allow the Word of God to minister to us powerfully. And so I trust that the word is going to minister to you again powerfully this day. So um, this morning I want to uh, I want to preach on the realm of the kingdom. So last week we looked at uh, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and it's this this uh, this pursuit of seeking the kingdom. I, I mentioned to you that the kingdom is a realm of the heart. Um, actually, that the, the the kingdom is 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 sorry established in the heart of man. Um, and this morning, I want to look at the realm of the kingdom. So, so uh, you know, in the Old Testament, David had a realm. It says that the, the realm of his kingdom was at its full extent uh, for the nation of Israel uh, under the, the, the kingship of, of David. It was the biggest. It was the most expanded. And um, I, uh, I've chosen a text that's um, out of Matthew chapter 13. And it's the, uh, the parable about the wheat and the tares. Um, and I've chosen this particularly because it gives us, Jesus gives us the answer to the realm of his kingdom. And so I'm fully aware that it is speaking about um, the last days, uh, the end time. I believe um, that, uh, that yeah, the, the end is near. I believe that uh, the return of Jesus is imminent. Um, I hold that. I, I live with that, with that tension is that... Um, is that we are, are currently in this world, but um, the return of Jesus is uh, is soon. And so I prepare myself, I live like um, uh, essentially there is uh, that today is my last day. I think it's important that we live like that, that we are not always living in uh, in this kind of future hope that, uh, that never comes into the reality of today. So uh, I've chosen this text because uh, it gives us a clear illustration of the realm of the kingdom, which is the, the topic I want to address this morning. And so uh, um, let me pray and then let's turn to the text in uh, Matthew chapter 13. And I'll read from there. Let me open in prayer. So Father, this morning we just uh, submit and commit ourselves afresh to you. We just thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Jesus, we thank you for your words that you have spoken and uh, uh, as you, you speak, have spoken in parables, we want to um, get the spiritual truth that, uh, that you meant for that. And so, Holy Spirit, would you help us to understand your word? Would you help us to, um, to receive your word? Would you help us to live the word, not just be hearers only, but to be doers of your word? And so we commit and commend this time to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. And so turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to read from verse 24. And, um, uh, and then I'll pick up the interpretation that, um, that Jesus gives. Uh, it's one of those parables that uh, Jesus uh, gives the parable and then he gives the interpretation to his disciples. So it makes it very easy to interpret. 
And then uh, there are a couple of points that I want to make that I believe um, are, are practical for us today. So let me start reading from verse uh, 24. It says, another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat and he went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and to gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gathering up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then um, if we, we pick up the interpretation from verse 36, it says, Jesus says the following, then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth and the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And so it's one of these, uh, a parable is really an, an analogy of everyday life eh, that uh, brings about a spiritual truth. And so um, Jesus uh, gives the parable uh, in the hearing of many and then goes into the house and the disciples then ask him for clarification on this parable. And so from this, we, um, he gives them the exact answers. And so we don't need to be rocket scientists or, or even uh, eloquent theologians to interpret what the parable really means. And so um, it, the, the, in essence, this is, this is what the parable of the tear and the, the wheat means. So it says that um, he, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. And so we see that the sower, the, the man who owns the field or the man who has the field, is the son of man and the son of man is jesus himself and so jesus is the is the one who is sowing the good seed and then the field is the world that's straightforward and it says that that uh, the field is the kingdom of god and so we see that the world is the kingdom of god's and um, the the world is the kingdom of heaven and uh, it's this physical world as well as the the um the the other parts of creation so um so that word that word world is not restricted just to the earth it's it's it talks about the universe and so um the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven the same thing um the the realm of the kingdom of god is the whole world um it's very very important and so jesus says that uh, the kingdom of god is the whole world and um it says there that uh, the, the good seeds are the sons of the king. And so the good seeds are uh, the sons and daughters of God. Uh, the good seed are, are, are those who've made the confession um, of their belief in their heart that Jesus is the son of God and that he has established them in righteousness. And so uh, um, that's quite clear that the good seed is you and I. And, and we get sown into this kingdom, which is the, the, the kingdom of um, um, the kingdom that occupies the realm of the whole world. And so uh, we are uh, we are dispersed into the whole world, um, which is really good news. Um, so we, we're not a church that uh, ends up being like a monastery where we all just gather together and we do our Sunday thing and and we try and do our midweek thing and 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 hope that uh, this evil world doesn't influence us. Um, actually, uh, we are the ones that are to influence the world because we are the we are in the majority. Um, the, the, the sons of God are in the majority. Uh, I believe that. I believe that that uh, that um, that Jesus is planting the majority, not the minority. His kingdom is ever expanding, never diminishing. And so, um, 
um, I hold uh, quite strongly to that, that uh, there's this transformation that's happening in the world where uh, many are being added and many are being sown into the kingdom um, because they're coming into a place of right standing with Christ by their confession. And then it says that um, the tares are the sons of the wicked one. And so we see that the enemy comes in amongst us and he, um, he, he, he um, could be our neighbors at our home. It could be even in the church. Could be those who are um, are sown by the enemy. Hey, it could be in your workplace, in your school. There are those who do not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and so these are called sons of the devil, and um, that's quite uh, you know quite evident. And it says that the enemy comes and he sows them, um, and then it says the harvest is at the end of the age, and so there's coming a time when Jesus is returning, and uh, on his return there will be a harvest where uh, there will be a separation and, and other texts speak about sheep and goats. They are, that the sheep and goats are together at the moment, but there will come a separation. And so that separation is going to happen when uh, the sons of the kingdom and the sons of um, um, the sons of, of the devil will be separated. And uh, um, that will happen. And it says there that uh, the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. So it's very, very important to realize that those who are going to be reaping um, come from heaven. It's the angelic realm that are going to be sent um, to do the reaping. And uh, so often, you know, we feel like we need to do the reaping. We need to be the ones who bundle up the, um, the enemy and, uh, and, and cast them into to hell. Um, where it's, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that the angels are going to be doing the reaping. They're the ones who are going to be separating the, the sheep and the goats. They're the ones who are going to be separating the wheat and the tares. And so, therefore, the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire. Um, as it will be in the end of this age. And so there is a separation that's going to happen. There is a burning that's going to happen. There's going to be a, 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 a consuming of those who do not live in right relationship with God. Um, and that's going to be a very sad day. And uh, it speaks about uh, that there's going to be gnashing of teeth and, and, and wailing and crying. But it says, the son of man will send out his angels and will gather out of his kingdom. So, um, very, very important that it says that it's a gathering out of his kingdom, those who are unrighteous. And so the, the reality is that uh, the unrighteous are squatters in the kingdom of God. The unrighteous are, are, um, are, are they are not uh, legally in, the, um, uh, in this realm of the kingdom of God. They, they've been placed there by the enemy. And so there's coming a day when... Um, when there will be no more squatters, where the um, the uh, the devil will be dealt with, and his sons will be dealt with, and there will be no more, um, um, uh, yeah, just the position of the enemy, hey, um, uh, in amongst the the righteous, and so um, uh, no more squatting, and uh, it says that uh, he will gather out of his kingdom. So uh, so often uh, people feel like. These, these, these separated kingdoms where a certain region is kind of um, uh, controlled by the demonic and another region is controlled by the, um, um, by the righteous. And, and so, uh, you know, if only we got a righteous government, then we can put a, a kingdom government into place and, and then we can settle South Africa and, and make sure that she's a, a righteous nation that uh, is only got the kingdom of God's people in it. Friends, that is not the case. We, we are not calling for a political um, transformation in this world that, uh, that has only Christians and, and we live in this place of utopia. Actually, what it says is that uh, the, the, the influence of Jesus Christ on the heart of man is everywhere. And so um, in amongst us everywhere are those that have been sown in by the devil who are come to rob, steal and destroy and obstruct. And so it's our there's a responsibility on our part as we are part of his kingdom to uh, to be living out certain things there's certain um uh, certain things that we have to do and there's certain things that jesus does and so the it says that um and he will cast them into the furnace of fire and there will be wailing and uh, gnashing of teeth eh? and the righteous shall shine forth uh, as the sun in the kingdom of their father he who has ears let him hear what the spirit says and so we see that this uh, the, the the kingdom of god is um that the the kingdom of heaven uh, that this kingdom where jesus is the king uh, at the culmination 
of this age is going to be handed over to Jesus. Um, says that uh, he's going to hand it over to the Father. He's going to give it to the Father and present it to the Father and say, Father, here is the kingdom now with your children, your sons and daughters in it. And so um, that's a really exciting time. I'm, 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 um, I live with anticipation of living in this eternal kingdom. But the point is, is that the kingdom and the realm of the kingdom is now. And uh, we're living in it. We are we are active part of it. And so as the church, we come together and we gather and we are, are, are equipped um, and then we are commissioned to um, to go into the world and to to bear fruit, to bear fruit of righteousness. There's a, a fruitfulness. And so we see that uh, where seeds are sown, it's only God that is able to execute the miracle of multiplying the seed. Um, I, I haven't been able to multiply something by uh in my own strength eh? uh, i haven't been able to take a seed and and make multiple seeds uh, i haven't been able to do that yet um and and i'm not so sure that anybody in in the world is able to do that yet to take a seed and to to multiply but god's able to take a seed and when it is uh, uh, planted into the soil when it's planted into the field uh, when it's planted in the field being the world here, yeah, when, when it's planted into the field, there's a fruitfulness. There's a, it says that we will be known by our fruit. And, um, and so that fruit is so important. We, we, are, we are to bear fruit. And so there's a lifestyle. What I see is that, uh, that we as the sons and daughters of God, we have a lifestyle that is radically different eh, from the world. And it's that lifestyle that, that, um, that needs to begin to elevate to a place where there's a display of uh, God's kingdom and God's realm. It would seem that around us that, um, it, it, you know, that the tares are, are more than the wheat. But um, I believe that there's, uh, this transition has happened where there's, there's more wheat than there's tares. And so we need to display a, a, a lifestyle um, and uh, a, a lifestyle of the kingdom. And so uh, a lifestyle that, uh, that includes people um, uh, we're not those who are, are building our own empire here. So we, we kind of buy our, we, we, you know, we get married, we have children, we buy a house, um, we raise our walls, we, uh, we do our own thing, and then we, we gather this money and then we retire and then we hope to go and travel around the world and then we die. Um, actually, we live for the benefit of people. And so uh, people matter to Jesus and so, um, so people matter to us. And so the kingdom is about uh, our lifestyle that uh, involves people. Um, the second thing I see that uh, we, we are fruitful for is that we are fruitful in our character. So our characters are transformed into sons and daughters of God. And, and so we carry the character of the Father, the nature and the character of the Father. And we've been preaching about that. And so I uh, continuously challenge you on integrity, your love, your honor, your, your goodness, your faithfulness, um, all of those attributes of the Father that are, uh, are so, um, um, yeah, they, they, they're in us. And so they need to become, you know, what our hearts are full of, our mouths begin to speak and, and our bodies begin to action. And so we see that there's a fruitfulness of character. And uh, I believe God is raising that level there. Thirdly, I see that there's a, a fruitfulness of our, um, of our teaching, um, that which we are transferring from ourselves to others, as that uh, um, we are fully persuaded and fully convinced that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that our teaching, our, um, um, that which we transfer to others is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the, the only way. There is no other way. And so we teach Jesus. We don't teach uh, Hamilton. We don't teach uh, uh, Percy or, or, or Pete or Graham or, um, or any of uh, anybody else. We, we, teach the, uh, we teach what Jesus and who Jesus is and uh, what he has done. And so that's why we look at his parables. That's why we look at his teachings. And that's so important. And so we, we teach uh, uh, that Jesus um, is the one that gives us faith. He's the one that gives us hope. He's the one that gives us love. And so uh, we, we look at those and um, we, we, we transfer that in the kingdom from ourselves to others, uh, faith, love, and hope. And then finally, the fourth thing that I see that we are fruitful in is our influence. And so we are, are um, sons and daughters of God that are empowered by the Spirit. And so our influence in the, 
um, in the kingdom is because there's life in us. We we are um, it's a kingdom of life. We're a kingdom of fruitfulness, but our influence is empowered by the Spirit. And so Holy Spirit lives in us. We're full of the Spirit. We're giving, um, we're giving counsel in the Spirit. We're being led by the Spirit. And so um, in whatever we are doing, hey, there's a influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so we are spiritful, spirit-living people. Um, those are the sons and daughters of God. Those are the ones who are fruitful. So we're fruitful in this. And so we, 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 we're bearing much fruit. And, and that all of these has a profound impact on others. And so you'll see that the character of the Father, the teaching of Jesus, and the influence of the Holy Spirit hey, are all um, um, elements that are growing in us and that we are producing and benefits others. And so uh, Jesus is able to come and he's able to pick those seeds from us <coughs> excuse me and uh, he's able to uh, to transform and and to do the work that he's able to do um to to save those that he needs to save um so the the, the tears that come and and um i'm just thinking about uh, a, a tear coming and saying to jesus would you put me into your hand and make me right so that i can be a seed of righteousness rather than a seed of unrighteousness and so there's this response there's a submission acknowledging that Jesus is the only one that can make us right with God. And so his kingdom is a, uh, it's a wonderful place. Uh, his realm is a wonderful place. It's good to be on this world. For many of us, we kind of, uh, we might be just waiting for uh, the time so that we can die and leave this world so we can leave this evil place. Uh, I want to suggest that this is the realm of Jesus and uh, the enemy is the squatter. He will be uh, judged. He will be taken um he will be taken away and uh, there's going to come a time new heaven new earth where um jesus will have full reign and where all of these uh, tears we don't have to concern ourselves about and there's going to be a very different way of us living uh, um, but i believe that the kingdom of god will continue that there will still be the activities of god that we are going to be executed and we're not going to be standing um on clouds playing harps we're actually going to be doing something um, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's going to be administrations, there's going to be ruling, there's going to be, um, we're going to be doing stuff in the kingdom of God for eternity. Um, and there's going to be this amazing response of worship to God. We're just going to come and we're going to bow down and exalt him and extol him and lay our crowns down before him. And we're going to be coming in and out of um, the new Jerusalem. And uh, we're going to be, um, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a wonderful time. So, uh, and we're going to do that all together. Uh, in unity and um, we're not going to need faith anymore because Jesus has already spoken and we're fully convinced that um, that uh, you, you know God is God and uh, we're the sons of God so I'm um, really really excited and I'm, I'm looking forward to that but I'm also very excited about being part of God's kingdom right now so um, that's good there's there's one very important point I want to make uh, from this text in terms of the realm the influence, the, the, the rule of Christ being the whole world. And it's this, say, uh, that uh, um, it's not my place, say, to judge the, the wheat next to me um, in terms of either fruitfulness or in terms of um, the, whether they're wheat or tares. And um, there's, a, there's a tendency in the church at the moment eh, to, to call out other wheat and just to, to declare them as tares and to... Uh, um, to destroy um, um, relationships, and there's there's some uprooting that uh, that many movements are doing now, where they they have uh, problems with the charismatic church, they have problems with the uh, just different expressions of the church, and uh, they got no problem making their voices vocal and calling out names. And uh, uh, church, I want to uh, I want to call us to a place where uh, this is not our practice. We do not want to um, uh, say that, uh, you know, I, I call out Hamilton Stevenson as a heretic and uh, I want to declare that, uh, you know, that which he's teaching um, will, will lead you to hell um, and, and, and take, take a road down that, uh, down that path. Because um, we do not want to, what God is doing, uh, we do not want to declare that uh, or, or ascribe even that work to the enemy. Um, as we do that, I believe that we grieve God and we grieve the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's not good. It's not good for us uh, to be uh, critical of, uh, of the church. 
and critical of those who are, are part of the church. We are not going to agree on every doctrine. And so our unity is not found in a unification of our doctrine. Our unity is found in the person of Jesus Christ, the sower. In him alone are we unified. There, we, we are not united around um, the, the man-made philosophies and ideas and concepts. We are united around Jesus Christ alone. Our unity is in Christ alone. And uh, we are empowered by the Spirit. And uh, we have a love and a passion for the Father. And so the Trinity, hey, we hold dearly. And so everybody who declares that Jesus is uh, their Lord and Savior and that uh, they believe with their heart and confess with their mouth, say, so these, are, these are sons of righteousness. These are good seeds. And um, what might differ is their, their level of fruitfulness. And so we can encourage uh, more fruitful growing. We can encourage people to respond to the character of the Father. We can encourage people to teach Jesus alone. We can encourage people to be influenced by the Holy Spirit. We can encourage people to live lifestyles of kingdom kids. Uh, we, can, we can certainly do all of that, uh, but uh, to call somebody out and declare that they are a demonic and of the de a son of the devil and, uh, and, um, and destroy people around them's faith, uh, uh, uprooting them, uh, is very, very dangerous. And Jesus calls us and says, that's not ours to do. It's actually, he will send his angels to do that. And so we make sure that we are sons of righteousness and uh, Jesus will make sure that uh, his kingdom is, is cleared of all the tears. We don't have to do it. So we, um, we, we live a kingdom of life and we let life uh, display itself. And so I want to, I, I want to call us to this and, and make sure that uh, going forward um, and into our future, into 2040, is that uh, we will not be known for, uh, for those who are um, undermining um, other uh, good seeds, um, uh, other righteous people, other children of God, um, and calling them out and sending them to, uh, and declaring them to hell. Um, I don't believe that's what God has called us to do. And, and, and so I want to make sure that right up front, eh, as we, we go this journey, that uh, that is very, very clear. And so um, it's exciting because uh, uh, it doesn't matter whether we're sitting in, in Russia or whether we're sitting in South Africa or whether we're sitting um, anywhere in the world, uh, whether it's Iceland or, um, or the southern, um, southern Pole. Uh, the point is, is that this entire realm is the kingdom of God. Um, wherever there are people, the kingdom of God is present. And um, uh, there's a, a physical, as my feet are on this uh, ground here in Fishhook, is a physical uh, manifestation of the kingdom through me because of my heart. And so um, I, uh, I want to trust and believe that multitudes are going to be added. And that's what revival is all about. Uh, as, as we understand our rightful identity in God, we are able to call forth um, uh, others to come and join us uh, and respond and acknowledge that Jesus is the, the way, the truth, and the life. And so let me, let me pray for us this morning. And uh, would you stand with me as I, I call in those who, are, um, those who are to be saved? I believe that God's wanting to save people. Um, it's, a, it's a time for, for, for God to, to call in and to sow seeds of, of righteousness into his field. And um, I believe that's what he's wanting to do. And so, Father, this morning, as we just settle our hearts before you, we acknowledge, Jesus, that uh, your realm of rule and reign is the whole world and that um, the enemy has come and uh, he's squatting on your territory. And uh, we thank you that uh, you will deal with him. We thank you that uh, Calvary has established this full realm and full rule of yours, that uh, you took back what is rightfully yours and uh, that the enemy now is on borrowed time. He knows that, and so he's trying to obstruct and uh, to rob, steal, and destroy. But Jesus, you've come to give life, and that life abundantly, and that abundant life is what we want to receive. But that abundant life is what we want to see everybody experience as we live this, uh, this kingdom of life, this kingdom of, um, of, of, of passion and of zeal and of, uh, of um, our delight in you, Lord. And so we want to commend ourselves to your call, to your mission, You've called us to be the salt and light to the earth. You've called us to be those who, who bear the fruit and to witness 
um, to you, Jesus. We witness to what you have done, Jesus. And, uh, and then we see that the tears are able to come and be transformed by Christ alone into sons of righteousness, from sons of disobedience into sons of obedience. And so we, we call them forth and we say, sons of disobedience, come forth in Jesus' name. Um, be, be, re, um, be healed, be uh, saved, be restored to fruitfulness, say, of uh, good seed. In the name of Jesus, we pray for salvation in this region. We pray for an outpouring of your spirit, Lord, a conviction to come on uh, this, uh, the, the sons of the enemy. And um, Father, a transformation, a change that happens to sons of righteousness, Lord. That's what you do. You bring about the transformation. That's what, that's what you sow. That's what um, you're wanting to reap. And so we commend ourselves to your mission. We commend ourselves for the... Your word says that you're long-suffering and willing that not a single person should be uh, gathered together and burnt um, in hell's fire, but that you desire that all should come to know you. And so we, we agree with you. We say yes and amen. And so, Father, uh, empower us to be fruitful, empower us to, to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, and um, enable us, Father, to, to point others to, this, uh, to Jesus, the relationship giver with the Father, and um, Holy Spirit, would you even now just come and uh, give us increase of influence in our sphere of influence on this earth, in this world, as part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. And so friends, um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I, I trust that you have a, a new understanding that the realm um, is, uh, is the whole world and that uh, we are the the full representation of the kingdom of god on this uh, on this earth that god's desiring every nation tongue and tribe to come to know him and and that's our mission is um, not a single person excluded we don't do this about ethnicity we don't do this about language we don't do this about um, race or um or about uh, gender or age um we're uh, we are kingdom people and so uh, what's important to jesus is important to us and so go this week, uh, be the, the full representation of, um, of who you are that honors and glorifies God. Uh, be filled with the Spirit. Ask God to empower you. Um, continuously be filled with the Spirit. Uh, teach who Jesus is and uh, proclaim the kingdom of God. The rule and reign of Jesus in the heart of man. Declare that. Practice that. Be fruitful and multiply. Um, on, on every level, just a, a fruitfulness at work, a fruitfulness in your education, a fruitfulness uh, in your marriage, a fruitfulness on, on every level. Hey, uh, bear the fruit of righteousness. So bless you guys. Love you all. Have a wonderful week. Until we meet again. Amen.